Welcome to the chapter 16 of the discussion today, which is on power and politics. Uh, we are gradually entering into the more dynamic aspect of behaviors in the organization, where factors at the individual level, group level and also at the organizational level interplay to give rise to the dynamics within the organization. And it is very important that the people within the organization know how to deal with these situations, what are the factors leading to these situations, because they ultimately affect the behavior and the performance of the people within the organization and also uh, the performance of the organization at large. So, um, today's chapter will focus on the power structure um, within the organization and what are the role of politics in the organization, how politics has been played in the organization and how do you recognize those things and what are the ways of dealing with power powers and what are the sources of power, how, where do they come from, how does it affect behavior, politics, how it is played and um, how, how we have to deal with those situations. So, the objective of today's discussion is <coughs> to understand the concept of power, to understand the sources of power, to know what are the interdepartmental power, what is the illusion of power, what is the political strategies and tactics what is the ethical issues, ethics, power and politics, using power to manage effectively. So, first we will start with the concept of power. So, the power and influence, these are two very related terms. So, and every interaction in an organization, every social interaction in the organization and social relationship can be interpreted as an exercise of power. So, a, a person A is said to have uh, power over person B um, to the extent like, like when person A can influence the person B to do, to act in certain ways and um, the power is to that extent like he can, he or she can make person B to do something like if left alone person B would not have done. So, influence is the, is the exercise of the, exercise of the capability like how to, to the extent like how one has an um, has a power of the over the other person. So, we can see from the definition over here is influence is a transaction in which person B is induced by person A to behave in certain way. Person A has power over B to the extent A can get B to do something that B would have not done otherwise would not do. So, the power is the capability and influence is the exercise of that capability. So, a person having power does not always mean like he exercises that power. So, when he exercises the power and tries to bring changes into somebody's ways of life or ways of doing things, then that is said like he is using his power to influence the other person. Leadership and power. So, leadership again focuses on the goal achievement and power is again a means to achieve that goal. So, it requires so that the followers are dependent on the leader to certain extent. So, and it is used to gain lateral and upward influences. So, um, leadership um, and um, power um, may not be with the uh, same person in some cases. 
it's generally like it is so like a person who has the leader um, has certain powers but in some cases leaders may be ornamental leaders also and the actual power of doing certain things lies with the some other person so due to his social connections or or um, expert power so uh, things vary like it's not always like the person who is a leader is having the is the person who is enjoying all the power so there is a contrast between leadership and power so the how power can be used in the organization is um, is it is used to maintain or uh, obtain and using power are all essential to influence the behavior and the thing which determines which um, like to what extent power can be used to influence other person's behavior is defined by the dependency relationship between person a and person b so because um a person a will enjoy p- power over person b only when the person b will be dependent on person a for certain reasons and person a um, can control something some aspect of what person b um, wants to have so this relationship of dependency and in the um, power and and the position to control some of the important things which the other person wants are 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 factors which determine to what extent power will be used in certain situations for um, influencing behavior now the sources of power or where does power come from are mainly sources of like mm, first is the interpersonal power so interpersonal power french and raven have given five power bases and they are like mm, legitimate power reward power coercive power expert power and referent power i'll repeat it's like legitimate power reward power coercive power expert power and referent power we we'll look into each of these uh, separately in details like when we are talking of legitimate power it is a power which one holds because of the position a particular position held in the um, organization so this is also called authority or the right to command so characteristics of organizational authority are like um, it is invested in a person's position so again it is accepted by subordinates and um, its authority is used vertically and it flows from top down so these define legitimate power now when we are talking of power and a person having authority over the other person doesn't mean really mean like whatever the person speaks of the person a will be agreed by person b even that Mm, will be agreed by person b even that to the extent like mm, uh, whether mm, uh, whether you feel like mm, okay mm, you, you, you are like differing or not differing to it these whether we differ or do not differ from what person a tells to do is determined by the zone of indifference so 
zone of indifference is where the, there is no difference uh, between what person A uh, tries person B to do and the way that is uh, expected to be done and how person B thinks like when it is to be done, how it is to be done etc. So, more or less like if you call in one sentence it is acceptable to person B. So, that is what like it give, giving an order does not always mean that the all orders will be acceptable to the subordinates. So, only those will be acceptable and readily followed which which will lie within the zone of indifference. If it lies outside the zone of indifference and so it, it may be the case that orders are given but not always followed. And so the zone of indifference is either like broader or narrower based on like <coughs> based on certain factors like um, um, cultural factors also may influence whether this zone of indifference is, is, is wider or narrower. Second is reward power is <coughs> based on based on person's ability to um, reward a follower for compliance. So, it occurs when someone possesses resource that another person wants to get and will exchange that resource for certain behavior. Mm. So, what happens like mm, mm, it is suppose a legitimate power. So, if, if you are in a position to reward someone, then what happens like that, that itself makes the person dependent on you and, and to do things as you want that person to do. Next comes is what is called coercive power. If we can understand from the word coercive is the means it is to punish. So, coercive power is based on fear. So, it can come from legitimate power, it can come from informally defined power also like fear of rejection by workers. Next is important is expert power. It is based on the individuals, um, it is based on the individual special and valued um, expertise on certain things. The um, lower the substitutability of the expertise, the um, greater is the expert's power. Referent power is um, referent power is based on individuals' way of attracting um, way of attracting people or guests. And it is it is it is based on individuals. Uh, it is um, based on individuals' charisma. So uh, and it, it is a particular style of um, attracting people. So, you can understand like um, legitimate power, reward power and coercive power all these things comes from the organization, um, but expertise and um, referent power um, these are within the individual and are derived from uh, personal characteristics traits of the individual. So, um, all these five bases of power can be 
either used singly or or it can be used as a mix and match so and the use of one power may affect the perception of the other power bases so like research shows um, legitimate and reward powers are positively related and coercive power is negatively related to um, legitimate and um, reward power. When we are talking of power and so power in groups itself, the groups per se, the formation of group itself gives rise to certain power and so in this section we are going to consider that. The first is that power derived from group is called coalitions. So coalitions are clusters of individuals who temporarily come together, the word temporarily is important, who temporarily come together to achieve a specific purpose. It seeks to it seeks to maximize their it seeks to maximize their size to attain the influence. So coalition like what happens if they form small boards in governments and discuss and all these things to to support their objective. So, what happens in organizations um, to work for a particular purpose so, and in which there is like high task and resource interdependency. So, what happens is um, people generally from coalition so to get their objectives done. So, this is where the importance of coalition is. So, um, next we come to another power in the which takes place of this group formation is um, sexual harassment. So, this happens because of unequal power in the organization. So, unwelcome advances, requests for sexual factors. Uh, favors and the other other verbal or physical conduct of uh, sexual nature then which is perceived as abusive or hostile um, by the person. So, these are again um, powers which generate out of being in group. Structural power is the power which is defined by the structure itself. So, um, structure what happens is the control mechanism which helps to facilitate certain interactions in the organization, but, but which does not nurture other interactions in the organization. So, it, um, so, by the mere presence of the structure itself, some um, mere presence of the structure itself it determines like who is placed above whom and what is the relationship, who is more closely placed, who is more distantly placed and all these things give, give rise to power because um, structure creates formal power by specifying certain individuals to perform specific jobs and make certain decisions. Other forms of structural power are like resources, um, power stems from like access to resources, one who has more resource, more information, more support and the more ability to get cooperation. Mm. Then 
what happens like due to the position of these resources this person becomes more powerful than the other person now when you tell like the top manager has more uh, power over a lower level employee means um, he is utilizing all this ability to control these resources into um, lower managers level of functioning gets affected by it decision making power is another power which is the expertise to make decisions in the organization and influence the decisions of the people in the organization c is information power <coughs> where it power generates from the information um, possessed by certain individuals and groups and the access to those information so this is very important so access to information and also the position of information are the important factors for information power because because it influences the basis of decision making when we are talking of interdepartmental power so <coughs> we are talking of powers which which are which can be uh, observed in between two departments so um, generally what happens sub units departments um, get control over strategic contingencies resources etc and um, and the Mm, and they do not like want to share it with um, others of the con like of the conflicting department and so like this is called interdepartmental power mm, which which is arrived at by controlling some of the strategic contingencies and um and it is also dependent on the substitutability like if one element is not there in the in the whole process then whether that is substitutable or not in if it is not substitutable then the the person or the department in possession of that power is more powerful than the other department coping with uncertainty so three types of coping strategies um, are like coping by prevention so we will try to cope by saying like okay nothing is going to happen and we will reduce the probability of that happening coping by information is we try to get as much of information as possible um, by either by statistical technique also or by surveys etc to um, to deal with the uncertainties in a much better way and the third is of course like the coping by absorption where um, where we try to do is we try to directly deal with the um, uncertainty and um, at the time when when it affects the um, department so or the sub unit so these are the three main points like first is coping by um, prevention second is coping by information and third is coping by absorption the interdepartmental um, conflict is also influenced by centrality so the degree to which the um, degree to which the sub um, sub unit is central to the organizational workflow 
is a factor which determines um, um, which determines the um, situations and like and in other words this is called the centrality of the unit. So, <coughs> research shows that centrality can be um, a significant source of sub um, sub unit um, sub unit power um, because it, it because of its effect in substantially um, substantially um, affect other units so um, due to that process like if it is a very central centrally held department and it, it can influence many other situations pertaining to the other units or the unit in discussion per se, then we have to be careful about it. Substitutability, the ability of other subunits to perform the activities of a particular subunit. So, the lower uh, unit sub, um, substitutability the greater is the power. So, because one substituted means you, your work can be done by some other person, but once it is mm, not substitutable means you are a very important resource for the organization and, and you, can, you, are, you can be a source of power. Third concept is that of empowerment. In empowerment what happens? It is a feeling of increase of self efficacy um, and and, um, and or um, self efficacy amongst the members and um, through uh, through um, through the identification of the conditions that foster powerlessness and through the removal by both formal organizational practices and formal of, um, uh, and informal techniques of providing efficacy information. So, empowerment is where I try to empower a person and he or the she has to understand also like I can do, I, I can complete or I am good at this task or not. So, these particular ideas about oneself <coughs> or oneself in the sense the group self also determines whether that, that, that will get uh, empowered and whether that will lead to the centrality or not and whether it will lead to um, perception of power or not. Empowerment as you have seen is not universally embraced by everyone, this is what we have to be very careful about. So, if it, it managers sometimes see like they are the, at the fear of like loss of power, control and authority. So, and, and then managers also fear that there will be loss of something, then the students, student, and like the employees are sometimes not able to make proper decisions and they are not, they do not want to make decisions and they, and they are not responsible also. So, empowering was tried once and it has failed and how much information to share to what extent? So, um, this um, this leads to problems like should we share 
all information at all levels to the employees or um, no there should be some um, decisions regarding it. So and lastly very importantly like not everyone wants to be empowered if we want okay um, we have a, this group of people and we we'll get this person empowered does not only mean that the person um, wants to get empowered. So, all these factors may lead to uh, why, why, um, why the concept of empowerment is not widely, uh, widely accepted. The stages of empowerment are identifying first the conditions that may lead to members feeling of powerlessness. So, um, giving of empowerment style like that of participative management and a merit pay then um, and providing information to subordinates to create their feelings of information um, of uh, uh, self efficacy like whether to what extent they feel like they can do certain things and feeling of en empowerment by the organizational members. So, <clears throat> and then it is like it is not for everybody mm, and um, uh, uh, and empowerment feelings have to be translated into behaviors because they are like me like the gap because people may not want to get empowered as I told like it may not be for everybody. So, um, it, it has to translate into a particular behavior which shows which expresses like that empowerment is has been done. Next we come to tactics, uh, power tactics within the organization. So, where this is the process by which people uh, translate um, their powers into influential tactics and these are like legitimacy. Uh, rational persuasion, inspirational appeals, then consultation, then pressure, ingratiation, coalitions. So, these are again part of discussion of the um, like impression management techniques to some extent. So, what we can see from this diagram is um, individual factors like high self monitors, internal locus of control, high MAC personality, organizational investment, perceived job alternatives, then expectation of success. Um, all these and the organizational factors like reallocation of resources, uh, promotion opportunities, trust. Um, and role ambiguity, unclear performance, etcetera, etcetera, zero sum reward practices give rise to both low end and high end political um, behavior. And this may again lead to high outcomes like um, rewards and um, averted punishment, um, etcetera. So, the factors influencing um, political behavior are both at the individual and organizational level and it can ultimately lead to a behavioral um, outcome which is either in terms of rewards gain or averted punishments. Perception of um, organizational politics is how, how, how you see it in the organization is it is a, um, it is a decreased job satisfaction then 
um, increased anxiety and stress, increased turnover and um, in reduced performance. So, um, these are some of the effects like of what happens if there is too much of arranging politicking. When you are talking of um, influence, influencing the behavior and like which power tactics to be used, it is um, it is like the sequence is very important. So, what we will try to do is start from the softer ones and move towards the um, harder techniques. So, then is skillful use of a particular tactic, then um, relative power of the tactic user. Some tactics work better when applied downward or upward. So, the type of request to that um, tactic is, is the request legitimate, if it is not then how it is consistent with the tactics value etcetera. The culture of the organization, the culture of the organization affects again the choice of the tactic and this culture can also be of two types, culture of the organization per se, culture of the team. So, um, culture of the um, country that the person is working in. So, these, these again has a um, this again influences like the local values influences the way we can use the power tactics over one another. So, these are the factors um, which influences how effective will be the power tactics. Illusion of power is where some people create like the, the illusion that they are more powerful than the others. So, in, the individuals who are perceived to be power um, having more power can later on do certain things for the um, um, for the organization or substantially influence others. Power in action is politics. Um, political behavior so, these are um, certain behaviors which are not required as a part of the formal role that anyone plays in the organization, but, but it influences the um, or attempts to influence the um, um, it attempts to influence the distribution of advantages and disadvantages within the organization. Next is like um, when you are talking of um, political things, so it is um, the formal structure, the formal role requirement does not require this type of behavior, but somewhere this creeps in and influences the whole lot of behavior pattern and these could be again of two types legitimate political behavior and illegitimate political behavior. So, legitimate political behavior it is though um, undesirable, but still it is normally within um, somewhat um, like within a normal range of normal um, everyday politics so, like meager politics what happens in the organization. So, legitimate um, political behavior is um, 
thus um, as defined by the structure illegitimate when you are talking of it is it is violent behavior illegitimate is violent in nature and it is extreme political behavior which violates the rules of the game and, and it tries to follow its own pattern. So, that, that is not something which is allowable in the organization. So, politically oriented behavior is designed to benefit the individual and servants and often at the um, it is it's, it's not defined by the legitimate power system, it is um, it, it takes care of the individuals or subunits benefit at the cost of the benefit of the organization and uh, and, and it is um, intentional and designed to acquire or maintain power. So, politically orientation of the organization is um, politically orientation of the organization is somewhat which is like um, we have to be careful about and um, because because sometimes what happens like organizations have groups which function for their own purpose for their own benefits and not for the benefit of the organization as a whole. Play politics is an important area of power and politics in the organization and of course, the first important thing is that of game play. So, Mm. like to these game playing according to Minsburg could be of various nature and for various purposes. So, to like resist authority it is the insurgency game um, to counter the resistance of authority is the is another game. So, to build power base is again um, the sponsorship game and coalition building game and <coughs> they defeat rivals mm. then see it, it's talking of like to defeating rivals and bring about organizational members so um, who, who can bring about change we like that of whistle blowing so the, these are certain things like how um, how we go about game playing. The insurgency game is um, played to resist authority that is um, the um, in order to reprimand an employee and the foreman does it ineffectively. So, these kind of things. Political tactics again are consultation, rational persuasion, inspirational appeals, ingratiation, we have already um, talked about it, legitimating personal appeals. So, um, coalition techniques, um, pressure techniques, no, too, too long a list, but um, the, these factors are used to get things um, get things done in an organization. Um, and and you see like um, the, these have different applications according to um, different situations and purposes. Exchange tactics is again like where where we promise that the compliance compliance will lead to um, reward. So 
some tactics again will work better in some situations while we are talking of upward downward influence and like managers prefer consultation, personal pers rational persuasion, etc., and in inspirational appeals. So, defensive behaviors again are like reactive and <coughs> pro protective behaviors to avoid action, blame, or change. Avoiding action is what we do is over confirming, back passing, playing dumb. Mm, stretching and stalling. Avoiding blame is buffing, playing safe, justifying scapegoating. Mm, avoiding change is prevention and self protection. Some impression management techniques, like and why we are discussing impression management over here, is also impression management is an important way of dealing with organizational situations and getting favors from the organization. So, it is we can take it to be a political behavior also. Mm -hmm. So, conformity is agreeing with someone else's opinion in order to gain his or her approval. So, excuses, apologies, acclimatization, then flattery flavors. Mm, uh, so, favors association, special group association, flattery, mm, these factors mm, are done to form the, mm, the first image very carefully in another person's mind, so that they get somewhat affected or carried away, but by what we want to do, we want to get from the other party. The, while talking of making ethical decisions, we should be concerned about utilitarian outcomes, the greatest good for the greatest number, individual rights, respect rights of free content, free speech and freedom of conscience. Distributive justice is have equitable and fairly distribution. Um, and Mm, and and this distribution is not arbitrary in nature. So, when, when uh, behavior cannot um, pass like these three criteria like utilitarian outcomes, individual rights and distributive justice, then, then, then it is not somewhat which is ethical in nature. How do we um, use power to um, manage effectively? Um, is like by recognizing like um, there are various interest level in the organizations and these interest levels, various interest levels are the sources of are, are the pockets where um, powers reside and, um, and uh, either may be due to the structure or due to expertise or due to like you can reward or some other reason. So, and we have to like through, through the power that we have any of the five powers that is mentioned we need to reach all these people uh, with different interests. Mm, knowing what position relevant individuals and groups hold with respect to issues important to oneself. So, mm, with, with whom I am sharing the power, with whom I have to negotiate, all these things, we have to do a background study before we go to interact with the other person. Understanding that to get things done, one must have power and in the case of those who oppose, one must have more power than they do. So, recognizing the strategies and tactics through 
which organizational power is developed is also very important. So, as a question we will come to discuss as what, what is the concept of power, what are the sources of power in an organization, what is politics, um, what are the factors that influences political behavior, um, what are the political strategies, then relation between ethics, power and politics, then short notes on defensive techniques and impression management. So, what you can find over here is maybe the questions are not too many, but questions are in depth and, and you need to like while answering these questions be very careful about like the two, three factors influencing the choice of power and um, the strategies, political strategies and um, how it is affecting both the people um, and the uh, functions of the organization. Thank you.